Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang, and today we're going to be talking about a STEMI case involving an anomalous RCA that was quite difficult to engage and to wire. The patient is a 35-year-old South Asian gentleman who presented with several hours of stuttering chest pain after a cricket match. He had no medical history other than smoking, and he says that, quote, everyone in his family has heart disease. The ECG shown here has clear inferior ST elevations, so the STEMI team was activated. On diagnostic angiography, the LED has moderate mid-segment plaque. Uh, the circumflex has diffuse non-critical distal disease, uh, so the culprit uh, must be the RCA. So we went to engage the RCA. Uh, we had no luck with the GR4. Uh, we, tried, uh, we tried a 3 drc uh, but uh, could not engage either. So we switched to an AL1, still no luck. We could not even see a hint of the RCA. So what to do? Well, in such cases, a strong uh, non-selective injection is sometimes helpful, although it wasn't particularly helpful here. A root shot uh, with the power injector uh, could also help. So as we were getting ready to set up the power injector, uh, we suspected the RCA might be anomalous. So we directed the, AL1, uh, the AL1 high and left. And finally, uh, we see uh, the RCA. Uh, it had a high takeoff on the left side, uh, right uh, next to the left main. So an RCA arising from the left is actually one of the more common uh, coronary anomalies, uh, a little bit under 1% of the population in this 2007 study. It is actually more common than a circumflex arising from the right or the left main arising from the right. So, well, this is a STEMI, uh, so we need to do a little bit better than just seeing the RCA. We need to engage it, wire it, and get a stent down there. So we typically start out with M plus left catheters, AL1, AL2, AL3, uh, depending on the size of the root. If the ALs don't work, uh, then we generally move to the left-sided catheters, such as the EBU or the JLs. Often we'll reach first for the smaller EBUs and JLs, such as the EBU30 or the JL35, uh, because the origin of the RCA will usually be higher uh, above the left main. Other catheters to think about are the bypass graft catheters, such as the LCB, the RCB, or the MPA. And if you still can't get engaged, uh, but can get close enough to the ostium, uh, you might try to free wire it, uh, the so-called airmail technique, uh, followed by passing a guideliner. A, a hydrophilic wire uh, works best uh, with the airmail technique. So uh, we went to work, uh, and we had a really tough time. Uh, we tried the AL1, then the AL2, and the L3, uh, but with no luck. Uh, we then reached for the EBUs also without success. The JL3.5 didn't work. Uh, we then tried the bypass guides, including the LCB, uh, which is the one seen here, as well as the RCB and the MPA. We even reached for the IM catheter. Nothing worked. No catheter even got close enough uh, for the airmail technique. So what next? Uh, his ST segments were still up. We were past 90 minutes now. Uh, somebody mentioned thrombolytics. So uh, in a final act of desperation, uh, before going to lytics, uh, we decided to try the AL2 just one more time. And by some miracle, uh, we got it in. Finally, we see the RCA, and we see a, a 95 to 99% stenosis in the distal RCA, which was clearly the culprit. Uh, but the uh, engagement was uh, clearly very, very tenuous, and uh, we needed to wire this. So uh, some tips uh, for wiring a vessel uh, when your engagement is tenuous. The uh, rookie move here is to treat this like any other vessel and just wire it with your regular workhorse wire. This usually will not work because the uh, friction uh, between the workhorse wire and the vessel wall will kick out the guide before the wire makes it even past the proximal part of the vessel. It's better just to start out with a hydrophilic wire, such as a Pilot uh, 50. The body of the hydrophilic wire is more slippery, so there will be less friction with the wall of the vessel to kick the guide out. And even better, uh, use a microcatheter along with your hydrophilic wire, uh, such as a uh, turnpike. Uh, this can provide better support and will allow you to swap your hydrophilic wire out to a supportive wire like a wiggle uh, once, uh, um, once you pass the lesion. Now, if you did start out with a workhorse wire and see that it's making no progress, the first thing to do is to stop advancing the wire if you see your guide kicking back. You don't want to lose the guide engagement you worked so hard to get. Um, there are a few options to salvage it uh, before you completely lose guide engagement. 
the first and easiest option is just to leave your workhorse wire in place and use it as a buddy wire and pass a second wire uh, next to it, uh, preferably a hydrophilic wire. The uh, second option is to pass a microcatheter over your workhorse wire. The microcatheter will decrease friction and increase support. And if you have a short workhorse wire, uh, you can either attach, the, uh, attach a docking wire or use the trapping balloon technique uh, to get your microcatheter in. Third option is to gently inflate the balloon at the ostium of the vessel. This acts as an anchor to stabilize engagement and will act, uh, allow you to push the wire more distally. Obviously, this comes at a risk of uh, potentially injuring the ostium. And finally, in all of these scenarios, once you have enough wire purchase, get a guideliner in there. You can do this uh, before you've even crossed the lesion. Uh, this will stabilize your engagement and make your life a lot easier. So for us, uh, we had our uh, standard issue STEMI wire, the BMW already on the table, so we will reach for it. Uh, we got the BMW to the proximal RCA, and not surprisingly, it started to push the guide back. So we stopped advancing it and left it there as a body wire. We then reached for a Pilot 50, uh, which uh, smoothly passed uh, to the distal RCA uh, with the buddy wire uh, in place, uh, approximately. We then got the guy liner down over the Pilot 50, and now finally uh, we're in good shape. With the guy liner in place, uh, providing excellent backup now, uh, the rest of the PCI was very straightforward. Uh, the distal RCA was stented with a 2.5 by 18 millimeter drug eluting stent and post dilated with uh, 2.75 and 3.0 NC balloons. Uh, the final angiographic result you can see here was uh, quite satisfactory. Uh, his EF was preserved uh, with only mild inferior hypokinesis and troponin I peaked only at 12. Uh, the patient did well and was uh, discharged a couple of days later. An outpatient coronary CTA was recommended to better define the course of his anomalous RCA. All right, take home messages. Um, stable engagement of an anomalous RCA from the left can be very tricky, especially in a STEMI situation when your adrenaline is pumping. Our suggestion is uh, to first reach for the AMPLATS guides. Uh, this usually uh, will do the trick. If not, uh, consider using left-sided guides such as the EBUs or the JLs or the bypass, uh, bypass graph guides. Once you're engaged, a uh, wiring a vessel with a tenuous guide engagement can be uh, challenging as well. The best option is to reach first for a hydrophilic wire rather than a workhorse wire. Hydrophilic wires are less likely to kick the guide out. However, if you did reach for a workhorse wire, stop advancing it the minute you see your guide pushing back. You don't want to lose the engagement that you worked so hard to get. Leave your workhorse wire in place as a buddy wire and reach for a second wire, preferably a hydrophilic wire. Alternatively, uh, think about using a balloon anchor or a microcatheter. And finally, uh, as soon as you get enough wire purchase, uh, reach for a guideliner, even if you haven't crossed the lesion. Uh, this will make your, uh, the rest of your PCI a lot easier. Thank you for watching.